Hello and welcome to Barrett Ministries. We are moving on with the Sermon on the Mount. We're in Matthew chapter 7 now. And today we continue in the study. I think, Maurice, this is probably the second part of the study that talks about don't judge in Matthew chapter 7. So Maurice is going to help us because there are things that we should judge. And there are things that we should not judge. And Maurice is going to help us discern which, uh, which is which, basically. Thank you for following us. And then Maurice, let us know, tell us. What do, what do you have to, the things we have to judge, yeah. Yeah, nice to see you all again. Uh, last study, we looked at what we shouldn't judge, and we shouldn't judge our brother's heart. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know his heart, so I suggest if you haven't seen that study, you go back and look at it. But this week, we're looking at the things that we should judge, and it's a sin not to judge. Mm. It's a sin to judge the things you shouldn't, but it's a sin to not judge the things you should, because the Bible clearly tells us what we should judge. And so we're going to look at it. The, the reading is from uh, Matthew chapter 7. We're, mm -hmm. we're going through the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. uh, and chapter 7 says, verse 1, Judge not that you be not judged. And when you look at the context, it's not telling us not to judge. It's saying don't judge until you've judged yourself. Mm -hmm. Take the beam out of your own eye. Then you'll see clearly yeah. to take the beam out of your, the splinter out of your brother's eye. Mm -hmm. So it is saying you can judge your brother. You can help him by mm -hmm. judging him and saying you've got a fault, brother. But first judge yourself. Mm -hmm. But never judge the man's heart. You mm -hmm. don't know his motives. Yeah. You don't know the pressures. You don't know his circumstances. Only God knows the heart. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to read John chapter 7, mm -hmm. verse 24. Jesus says, Judge not according to the appearance, mm -hmm. but judge righteous judgment. Yeah, that makes it a bit more clearer. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we don't judge after the flesh, mm -hmm. appearance, mm -hmm. what we see physically. Yeah. Judge righteous judgment. Mm -hmm. So, it's telling us to judge. Mm -hmm. But he say, don't judge after the flesh, mm -hmm. judge righteous judgment. So let's get straight to it. The six things that we're told to judge yeah. uh, that I can find in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. We can't look at the Old Testament. We're in the New Covenant yeah. now. We refer to it, but we'll look at it. The first thing that we're told to judge is sin in the church, mm -hmm. not, not sin in the world. Yeah. I, I don't judge the world because they're against God's Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. because they murder, they commit adultery, mm -hmm. they have sexual perversion. I don't judge them. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I will judge the world. Mm -hmm. You must judge the church. Yeah. Th that's We're not of the world. We, yeah. we judge the church. So let's look at that. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Mm -hmm. It is reported commonly that there's fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much named among the Gentiles, mm -hmm. that one should have his father's wife. So that's not sleeping with your mother, mm -hmm. it's your, your father's wife, if they have more than one mm -hmm. wife. And you're puffed up and have not mourned that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. Don't forget, mm -hmm. we said there's two parts to yeah. judgment. First, you assess whether they're guilty or not guilty, mm -hmm. and then you pass sentence. Yeah. If they're not guilty, of course, you, you mm -hmm. they, they go free. They go free. But if, if, if they are guilty, then you must judge mm -hmm. and you must pass sentence. Yeah. And Paul does it here. So, for I verily... This is verse 3. For mm -hmm. I verily am absent in body, but present in spirit. I've judged already. Mm -hmm. So Paul wasn't even <coughs> there. Yeah. But he said, I'm, I'm not with you, but I'm judged already. Mm -hmm. I know that is sin. Yeah. You can't sleep with your mm -hmm. mother's, uh, father's wife. Yeah. In the name of our Lord Jesus, when you're gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. deliver such a one unto Satan <coughs> for wow. the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved mm -hmm. on the day of the Lord. Wow. So this is not vindictive. Mm -hmm. He says, hand him over to Satan, mm -hmm. and Satan may take his body, yeah. that his soul may be, spirit may yeah. be saved. So he's concerned about his spirit, not his More, body. Yes, absolutely. So he's saying, if you don't deal with it, he'll carry on and maybe God will cut him off. Mm -hmm. So let Satan have his body mm -hmm. so that his spirit may be saved at the mm -hmm. day of salvation. So he's worried about his eternal yes, spirit. It's more important. Yeah. yeah, It's more important. Your glory is not good. Know ye not the little, little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? That's an important that's, principle. Yeah. 
because a little bit of hypocrisy in the church will spread like mm -hmm. wildfire. Mm -hmm. If the pastor is a hypocrite, mm -hmm. he produces his own can. He'll have a church full of hypocrites. Mm -hmm. If the pastor is honest, he'll produce honesty because mm -hmm. he's honest. Mm -hmm. uh, so a little leaven leavens the whole lump. You can't allow these things to be in the and church. And that's why you really want to deal with that situation. You've got to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, cast it out, do yeah. whatever you need to do. It's going to contaminate everybody yeah. else, yeah. So it says, purge out there for the old leaven, yeah. that ye may be a new lump, mm -hmm. as ye are in leaven. For even Christ our Passover is mm -hmm. sacrificed mm -hmm. for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old <laughs> leaven, excuse me, mm -hmm. neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, mm -hmm. but with the unleavened bread of sincerity. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read on because the conclusion yeah. to the chapter. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to accompany with fornicators, mm -hmm. yet not altogether with fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or idolaters, mm -hmm. for then must you need go out of the world. Yeah. So he said, I've told you not to keep company yeah. with people who are sinners. Mm -hmm. He said, but not the sinners in the world, mm -hmm, or else yeah. how can you go into all the world? Evangelize, yeah. So he's talking about keep away from people in the church. A brother, a, a sister. A brother yeah. who's not walking rightly. Yeah. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, covetous, idolatry, mm -hmm. a railer, a drunkard, mm -hmm. or an extortioner, with mm -hmm. such as one, not to even eat. Don't even wow. have a meal with him. Mm -hmm. So if a brother is an adulterer, yeah. a drunkard, you can't have a meal with him. Yeah. For what have I to do to judge them that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within. Don't yeah. judge those without, judge those that are within. For them that are without, without God mm -hmm. judge you. Mm -hmm. God will judge the world. Yeah. Therefore, put away from yourselves that wicked person. Mm. So he's assessed that that's a sin in the yeah. church. And he said, you need to put <coughs> them away. Yeah. Hand them over to say, let him have the body. That's all right. Because we're more interested in his it's salvation. Yeah. He's a child of God yeah. and wow. he's fallen into sin. So therefore, let's protect him and the church. We're purging out the level. The, level. So it's, yeah. the first illustration is quite ruthless, Joseph. Yeah, it is. It is. But. We've not got to decide and say, well, Paul was a bit too hard. This is for us. It, it demanded something tough. Yeah. A little fault. It's like that with your children. Mm -hmm. They make a mistake and you say, okay, you keep making the mistake. No tea tonight. Go up to your bedroom and stay mm -hmm. there all night. Mm -hmm. Because it's a little thought, but a big thought, you have to do something more yeah. serious. So mm -hmm. we understand that as parents. Yeah. You know, a little fault, a little <coughs> punishment, a big fault, a big punishment. So this was serious. This could yeah. contaminate the whole church yeah. because they were recognising it yeah. and doing nothing about it. So if you do nothing about it, you're actually condoning it. Yeah. So if the brother is sleeping with his, his father's wife and everyone knows about it mm -hmm. and nobody does anything, they're actually saying it's all right by default. Imagine how many... How many things the church or tolerate? That's a good word, tolerate. Yeah, because they, they choose to look away, and the the longer you live it, it lingers, and then you contaminate it contaminates all over. Permeates the whole yes. church. Yes. Well, yeah. how many pastors know that yeah. some people are sleeping together in the church, but they don't want to address it yeah. because they don't want to cause a lose push. members and yeah, and tithing and <laughs> yeah, but yeah. The longer you leave it, the worse yeah. it gets. Yeah. And, and uh, you, you've got to deal with it. You, yeah. you can't, but the pastor is actually condoning it by doing nothing, by yeah. not saying anything. Yeah. So that's the first thing. So mm. sin in the church, we have to deal with. Yeah. Uh, number two, mm -hmm. we have to judge between brethren when there's a dispute. Mm. 1 Corinthians 6. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? He said, how dare you when you've got a dispute? Mm -hmm. So, all right, you're a Christian builder mm -hmm. and you've come and done my roof because you're yeah. a Christian. But then I'm not happy with the job and I won't pay you. And So, so we've got a dispute yeah. among Christians. He said, how dare you go to the world to solve your problems? to go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Why don't you bring it to the church and say, look, we, yeah. we can't, will you help us here? We've got a problem. 
Do you not know the saints shall judge the world? Yeah. Wow, well, we've just been talking about yeah. <clears throat> facing God and that and, and being like God, Christ. He says, don't you know the saints will judge the, the world? world. Well, wow. and if the world shall be judged by yes. you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? If you're going to judge the nations yeah. Yeah. when you reign with Christ, can you not judge a little matter in the church? Know ye not that he shall, you shall judge angels? angels? Wow, how much more than things pertaining to this life? We're training now for reigning. So if I can't judge a matter in the church, how can mm. God say, well, you can judge angels? Yeah. He won't say it, yeah. obviously. It can't, I can't even register that yet. Because we don't qualify, angels, yeah. do we? No, you don't. You just don't feel it. How we live now yeah. is how we will be when we reign with Christ. Wow. Be over ten cities, be over five cities. Judge angels, mm -hmm. you can't judge anyone. You couldn't even judge a, bit, a small matter in the church. You couldn't wow. even judge something in your own family. Wow. If ye then have judgment of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are at least esteemed among the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there's not a wise man among you, mm. not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren? He said, I'm speaking to you, shame. Yeah. Is there not some little old lady, a new yeah. convert even, who could judge? He said, I'm speaking to you, shame. Is there no wise men in the church? Yeah. Are there no elders, mature people? But brother go to law with brother, and that before unbelievers. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you yeah. because you go to law one with another. Mm -hmm. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why mm -hmm. do you not rather suffer yourself yeah. to be frauded? See, he's yeah. saying, what's the problem in the first place? All right, mm -hmm. th this man has not gonna, done a good job. Mm -hmm. Why don't you take the problem? <clears throat> or, or the man will... Accept the wrong. Yeah, or if the man who's done a bad job and he won't pay him, say, it's all right, brother, it's, it's, it's all right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it wasn't up to your standard. Why don't we take the blame and take the shame? And, mm -hmm. and uh, why take each other to court? Yeah. Nay, you do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom? He's saying that these people who are yeah. debating and fighting amongst themselves, mm -hmm. how can they inherit the kingdom? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, mm -hmm. idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves <laughs> with mankind, mm -hmm. nor thieves, nor covetous. Nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Doesn't yeah. say they're not saved. I know. It just took you out of my mouth. Maybe, yeah. maybe they say, yeah. but they're not living the life. Yes, the they're, kingdom lifestyle. They're not living the kingdom lifestyle. I mean, how many Christians are covetous? Forget yeah. all the others. Mm -hmm. Covetous. Yeah. But they won't inherit the kingdom. Covetousness is idolatry, yeah. Colossians said. And such were some of you, mm -hmm. but we've got to change. Yeah. We were like that, of yeah. course, that's oh, no problem. Mm -hmm. Such were some of you, mm -hmm. but you were washed. Yeah. You were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord and by the Spirit of our God. See, we should have changed, Joseph. Yeah. We were talking about Christians yeah. before we did yeah. this broadcast. We were talking about Christians who don't change. Yeah. There's something wrong. They used to be like that, sure. Yeah. Why isn't the marriage healed? Why isn't they, they become honest? Why why are they still talking about the past? We've been debating. Especially the, Jonah got it. Salvation is of the Lord. And if he does the job, he does it thoroughly. Surely he's, he's mighty to save. We sing that song. Yeah, yeah. So why does not change? So yeah, this is a practical principle that Paul is giving us here. Yeah. There's sin in the camp. <laughs> there yeah. is sin in the camp. Yeah, there has has to be dealt with. Yes, absolutely. And God was ruthless when he was dealing with sin in the camp. People start dying. Moses was like, yeah. what's going on, God? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's sin in the camp. What do you mean? <laughs> Achan. Yeah. He had, to, he had to go. I've got some examples yeah. later. Anyway, about yeah. Judge. No, so, true. number one sin in the church. Mm -hmm. We've got to judge that. Sin, sin between problems in the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How can it be that one woman sits on one side of the church and another yeah. woman sits on the other side and they won't talk to each other? Yeah. That's a dispute. The pastor has to knock the heads together yeah. and say, look, this can't be. Yeah. 
you know, they're not taking each other to court, but they may as well do. Yeah. They're sending each other to Coventry. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're not communicating. <laughs> That's one part of the body not communicating yeah. with the other. That means that part of the body is paralysed. And it means, and it's so division because there, there will be allegiance. Some will be with that one. Some People will say, she's right, I know what she did to her. <laughs> and the other one will say, yeah, but she won't repent. And, so and on and back and forth. Out. Yeah. And it's it's yeah. it's a it's a schism in the body of Christ. Yes. It paralyzes. Yeah. How can God bless a church where there's that that sort of thing? Why do not the pastor deal with it and judge with it? Yeah. So we 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 can't say, well, we can't judge. We don't know the mm -hmm. circumstances. When there's disputes between brethren, you've got to judge. Yeah. Number three, hypocrisy. We're supposed to judge mm -hmm. hypocrisy. Pride, mm -hmm. yeah. legalism, the praise yeah. of men. Mm -hmm. These are all the things that mm -hmm. hinder those who want the truth. Mm -hmm. Luke verse uh, chapter 11. And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him, and he went to down and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marvelled that he had not washed before dinner. And the Lord said unto the him, now do you Pharisees make clean the outside of your mm -hmm. cup and the platter, mm -hmm. but your inward part is full of ravings and wickedness. So he's judging the heart. Yeah. Three. He's judging righteous judgment. Yeah. He's not judging the appearance because no. everything looks right with yeah. the Pharisees, but he knows the heart. He knew I was in man. You fools, did not he that which make that which is without, make that which was within also? But rather give arms of such things as ye have, yeah. and behold, all things are clean unto you. And then he judges the Pharisees, and he curses them. Woe unto you, that's cursed. Yeah. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for your tithe, mint, and rue, and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other yeah. undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, you love the uppermost seats in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplace. Pride yeah. is judging the pride. Yeah. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, <clears throat> hypocrites, for ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Then answered one of the lawyers and mm -hmm. said unto him, Master, mm -hmm. by saying that thou reproach us all. When you're criticising the Pharisees, you're criticising us as well. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, dead yeah. right. Yeah. Yes, I am criticising. I'm yeah. judging you. Yeah. And he said, woe unto Word. you, yeah. lawyers, for you laid men with burdens grievous to be born, mm -hmm. and you yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. That's religion. Mm -hmm. Religion is putting burdens on people. Yeah. Duty. You've got to do your duty. Woe to you, for you build the sepulchres of the prophets and your fathers kill them. <laughs> we do exactly the same today. Or oh, Smith Wigglesworth, John Wesley, yeah. or oh, we, we, we revere them. If John Wesley was here today, he would empty the church. He used to go down and yeah. say, have you fasted? Do you take communion? You're not a Methodist, and it, he would write them off the register. Wow. It, it was strict. Wow. Yeah, this is what Methodist. Do you fast twice a week like the Methodist? Do you take communion? Well, you're not a Methodist. This is what we do. If you wow. want to be us, this is what you do. Smith Whittlesworth and these men, you wouldn't live with them. Mm. We, we revere them and think, but they were hard people to live with. They, they were prophets and yeah. they were men of God and... and they you didn't know, pity the flesh. No, no. Emotions, no. No, no. You, yeah. you, <coughs> they will appear you, rude. You, yes, because you yeah. couldn't suck up to them. Yeah. You know, we say, oh, this mighty man of God. Mm -hmm. But these mighty men of God in those days, they know that you're creeping. They know you're <laughs> after favours. They would cut you off dead. Yeah. They wouldn't mix with carnal Christians. Wow. Truly you bear witness, this is verse 48, that you allow the deeds of your fathers, for they did kill them, and you build the sepulchres. Therefore said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them will slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which were shed from the foundation of the world mm. may re be required of this generation. Wow. They didn't like it. 
Verse 53, and as he said these things unto them, the scribes and Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth mm -hmm. that they may accuse him. him. They didn't want to be judged. Yeah. It's, close. it's a sign when you judge somebody and they resist it. Yeah. You should be happy if somebody shows you your fault and say, well, I, I couldn't see it, but yes, yeah. you're right. But to defend yourself and attack them yeah. and provoke, it, it shows the wrong spirit. Mm -hmm. So we've got to judge sin in the church between brethren. Yeah. We must judge hypocrisy, covetousness, yeah. pride, legalism. Mm -hmm. uh, and number four, we should judge prophecy and teaching. Yeah. As I'm and Joseph are talking, mm -hmm. you should be judging us. Mm -hmm. One speak, the other judge. Mm -hmm. We're told to judge. You should judge your pastor, what he's saying. Check it with the Bible. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to challenge your pastor mm -hmm. if he's saying things that are not in the Bible. Go to him in the right spirit, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't go proud and arrogantly, yeah. but lay it before him and say, look, pastor, mm -hmm. I've got a problem. Yeah. Put the problem in you. I didn't understand that because the Bible says this. Mm -hmm. Reason. Don't go bombastically and get, get, get his heckles up. So 1 Corinthians 10, verse 15. I speak as to wise men. Judge what I say. Mm -hmm. There's Paul asking people, judge what I say. And he's talking about the communion, the cup of blessing. Is it not the communion of Christ, the bread which we break? Is it not the communion, communion of the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. He's saying, judge what I say. Assess it. So Paul's not a fri frightened to no. be judged. He said, judge what I say. Yeah, he said, I don't even judge myself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and 1 Corinthians 14, verse 29. This is talking about the gifts of the Spirit and how to operate them. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about tongues. Mm -hmm. If sp somebody speaking a long tongue, unknown tongue. If there's no interpreter, let him keep silent. If yeah. he stands up and speaks a word in tongues. Verse 29, let the prophets speak, two or three, and let the other judge. <laughs> so prophecy, we're supposed to judge. You can't yeah. say, well, he said, thus saith the Lord. That, that could be out of his own mouth. So we judge at the prophecy. Yeah. When somebody speaks in tongues and somebody <laughs> interprets, we, we judge it. Yeah, things done decently. We're not judging the person, we're yeah. judging the tongue. Yeah. All the, because what happens is in most Pentecostal churches, people just speak in tongues, there's no interpretation, there's no discernment more. It's, it's, it can even look messy, and uh, the pastor needs to be able to assess that. Yeah. And what we've been talking about is judging. It's almost like we need to let people know it's a way of assessing what we're doing. Yeah. The pastor needs to be to, able to assess what's being spoken of, and we have to be able to do that. There has to be room for that. Otherwise, you know, well, I don't want to judge. I don't want to judge. He's, if you know, he's a yeah. leader, he mm -hmm. has to lead. So yeah. if somebody speaks in tongues mm -hmm. and the pastor thinks, and then somebody interprets and the pastor thinks, that's God. Mm -hmm. He must affirm it and yeah. say, look, but I think witness. that's God. Yeah. Let, let's follow that leading. Let's pray according to mm -hmm. that. When God speaks and then somebody starts a chorus, everyone forgets what God said. Yeah. So the pastor should say, I feel that's God. Yeah. And if he doesn't, I think he's an obligation yeah. to say, look, you judge. That's up to you. But I judge that that wasn't mm -hmm. of God. That was in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to dismiss that. But you judge for yourself. Yeah. And, and th if he educates the people, they will learn to judge them what's of God and what's of not. But if he keeps quiet, it means that he's accepting everything, yeah. even in the flesh. And there's lots of prophecies in the flesh that he's just said the Lord, I declare and I decree that this is going to happen. And it, it's it's out of their own imagination. Yeah, I think this, there's no fear of God there, Maurice. It's, it's worrying how so many of them go. And it's like the more they do it, the more they feel unpunished. Yeah. They think they just carry on doing it. But is it what he says? They're storing up. They don't even know what's going to happen. They're storing up the wrath of God because this is... And nobody's helping them because no. you need help. 
Yeah. You know, if somebody says, I think that was in the flesh, brother, yeah. you go home and say, yeah. examine yourself and, and consider it. It helps you. Yeah. A rebuke is a good. It said the, the rebuke of a brother is precious. Mm -hmm. It's precious because he loves you. He's mm -hmm. not trying to harm you. It's not criticism to put you down. Mm -hmm. It's criticism to build you up, to, to, to advance you. Yeah. Number five. We must judge false prophets in the church. Mm -hmm. This is very neglected these days. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 7. And we'll come to this because this is the Sermon on the Mount. We'll come to this in a few weeks. Matthew chapter 7. Now Jesus is actually telling us to beware of false prophets. And he's telling us how to spot them, how yeah. to judge them. Mm -hmm. So if, if Jesus tells us how to judge them, how can we say don't judge when Jesus is telling us how to judge? Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. We've just talked about before, weren't we? Jesus said, I'm sending out a sheep amongst wolves. wolves. The wolves are the false prophets. Yeah. Wolves in yeah. sheep's clothing. That's clear. So, so they, they're not outside, they're yeah. in the church. Yeah. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Inwardly, they raven in wolves. How will we know them? You'll know them by the fruits. Mm -hmm. Not by the suits, yeah. not because they appear good, mm -hmm. not by the gifts. Mm -hmm. People say to me, how can you say he's a false prophet, Morris? Because he's clearly anointed. Mm -hmm. And I say, yes, he is. But we don't judge them by the anointing. Yeah. That's the power of God. We don't judge yeah. them by the gifts. Though they bring fire down from heaven, though they prophesy and it comes to pass, mm -hmm. though they do miracles, mm -hmm. so those are the gifts. Mm -hmm. We judge them by the fruit. That's the character. Yeah. So if a man does miracles and he prophesies and it comes to pass and is covetous, that's a sign of a false prophet. There's no fruit. And 2 Peter 2 tells us all about mm -hmm. false prophets. I'll look at that in a minute. Mm -hmm. You shall know them by the fruit. And it's as though it, it's not debatable. Yeah. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? In other words, you know, you can see it. It's it's not hidden. You don't get thorns on a fig tree. Mm -hmm. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. <laughs> a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, no. neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. It's impossible yeah. for a, a false heart mm -hmm. to give a, a good fruit character every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire mm -hmm. wherefore conclusion so mm -hmm. by their fruits we them. talked about the fruit of the yeah. spirit aren't they? Yeah. by their fruits you shall know them mm -hmm. do they line up with the yeah. beatitudes that's yeah. the fruit of the spirit yeah. are they meek yeah. or proud are they teachable yeah. Are they hungry and thirsting after righteousness or hungry and thirsting after a bigger church and more money? <laughs> yeah. What, what are they hungry and thirsting? Are they humble? You know, are they merciful? Yeah. Are they a peacemaker? So th 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 that's how we judge them or the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, 2 Peter 2. If one, if one person says, uh, sometimes it might take time, Maurice, to know, you have to spend a little bit more time to know the person, to see how they bear fruit and everything. Sure. So if, if they say that because of the, if they haven't spent time with them, they wouldn't know whether they really, really have those. But I, I believe we have to trust the Holy Spirit in that because he's a discerner. Yeah. He definitely can discern. You don't have to, I don't even think really, if you really focus, I don't think it will take you time to know if this brother is, is speaking the truth. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you will see that quickly. Sometimes you talk to a, a yeah. man you've never met and he yeah. comes and he says all the right things, yeah. but your spirit thinks there's something yes. wrong. So yeah. you watch him. Yeah. And there's other people you come and you feel yeah. happy with them, yeah. but you still watch them yeah. because you're looking for fruit, yeah. not gifts. They may be charismatic, yeah. they may have a personality, they may know the scriptures. Yeah. They yeah. may have good credentials. They may have won a thousand people to Christ. Wow. But you don't judge off that. Yeah. You're looking for fruit yeah. because the fruit comes from the heart, yeah. not the actions or the achievements or the gifts. Mm -hmm. 2 Peter 2. Mm -hmm. And the whole chapter is about false prophets. 
But Peter said, verse 1, but there were false prophets also among the people. He's talking about the Old yeah. Testament. Mm -hmm. As there shall be even false teachers among you. So mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm sending out a sheep amongst wolves, yeah. amongst false prophets. And Peter said, there were false prophets in the Old Testament and there will be false prophets amongst you. So we should expect mm -hmm. the false teachers in the church, the false prophets. Uh, when a church says, well, they've got, there's none in our church, maybe they've got no discernment. I think the yeah. devil will put someone in every church yeah. and it may be the elder, maybe the deacon often. Yeah, the, you, the person the they don't expect. Well, Judas, yeah. the treasurer, mm -hmm. had the bag. Yeah. You know, I would always look at the treasurer first mm -hmm. because, it, <laughs> you know, maybe he's covetous. Why would yeah. he want to handle the money? Yeah. It, it may not be, maybe a wonderful man, but, you know, when you handle money, oh, often it's a sign. They shall bring in privately damnable heresies, even deny the Lord that bought them, and bring upon them swift destruction. Hmm. And uh, it, it says some terrible things about them. Uh and these are people who've known the way of salvation. They're not the devil's plants. They're yeah. not the tares. Mm -hmm. The tares and the that, wheat. That's different. The tares are Satan's plants. It says who's yeah. planted them? Satan. Satan. So yeah. they say these are people who've been right. Mm -hmm. That's why they're so deceitful. And the covetousness, the cares mm -hmm. of the world, deceitfulness of riches made them unfruitful. So I'll just read that. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. Uh, before that, uh, let me see if I can say, it says that they're covetous, they make merchandise of you, they're okay. after your money, that's one of the signs of a false prophet. So if somebody's asking you for money, there's something wrong. If they're asking money for their ministry, if they're asking money to feed the poor, mm -hmm. they're asking money for, you know, that's different. But if they're asking for their sowing to my yeah. ministry, that's covetousness, that's a sign of a false prophet. Yeah. For if do they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, so they've escaped through the knowledge of Christ. They are again entangled and overcome. The latter end is worse than the beginning. Better have never been saved. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. So they knew the way of righteousness. Yeah. So I can't say, oh, they were never really saved. Because exactly. exactly. I can't say that. He yeah. says, I've known the way of righteousness. Then after it, they've turned from the holy commandment delivered unto them. And it's like a, the true saying, the dog's turned to his own vomit mm -hmm. and the, the pig, the sow that was washed, she's gone back to wallowing in the mouth. So they've been escaped the pollutions of the world. They've known the way of mm -hmm. righteousness, yeah. but they've by their own choice have gone back again. These are the false prophets. They've been escaped from the world, but mm -hmm. they've become covetous. They've become proud and they, they've gone back into the world. And Jude 1. Yeah, it, it, it's just such a challenge because you're thinking, what happened? This is this is when they, is that where we talked about earlier that they make the choice now? Yes. But that, they said Jesus is not fulfilled. Choice. Yeah, it's not, they're not really happy. They're not being fulfilled in the, in this calling, in this whatever Christianity. So they want to go back and, I think they've been yeah. seduced. Yeah. To, and it's very yeah. subtle to think that I couldn't do it yeah. and you couldn't do it. Yeah. God's not blessed me mm. enough to tempt me. Because mm. David said, Father, yes. don't make me so poor that I'll curse you. Yeah. And don't bless me so much yeah. I won't need you. Yeah. Love the cross. So uh, I'll just read a couple of verses. Mm -hmm. uh, Jude chapter 1. Beloved, verse 3, when I gave to you all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me mm -hmm. to write unto you to exhort you that you earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. I need to warn you, you need yeah. to stand for righteousness. Mm -hmm. For there are certain men crept in unawares mm -hmm. who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, mm -hmm. ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness mm -hmm. and denying the only Lord and God our Saviour Jesus Christ. And then it says, woe unto them, verse 11, mm -hmm. they've gone the way of Cain, 
We've got a whole week on that. Mm -hmm. They've run greedily after the error of Bailey. Yeah, yeah. We'll have a week on that. And perished in the gainsaying of Cora. Mm -hmm. So he's telling us how to we judge how to judge them. Mm -hmm. And it says that they're men of corrupt minds, walking after their own lust. Their mouth speaking great swelling words, that's verse 13. Yeah. Having men's person in admiration, backslapping this mighty, yeah. almighty man yeah, of yeah. God and this great person. That happens a lot today. Yeah, but that's that's a sign of a false prophet. Why, why are they bullying somebody up, making them great? Speaking great swelling words, having men's person in admiration because of advantage, using each other for their own ends. So we're coming to the last one. So sin in the church, we should judge. Yeah. We should judge between brethren when there's a dispute. Mm -hmm. We should judge hypocrisy and mm -hmm. self-righteousness and pride and legalism in the church. We should judge false prophets. And last, and maybe most important, we should judge ourselves. ourselves. 1 Corinthians 11. Yes. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Mm -hmm. For he that eateth and drinketh Unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not deserving the Lord's body. Mm -hmm. That's very serious. To think you could eat and drink damnation, mm -hmm. taking communion. Uh, I've written uh, six books on the early church, and there's a whole book on the breaking of bread. It's on the website, and it's available from mm -hmm. Amazon. I suggest you read that if you don't understand communion, because it's very serious to eat and drink damnation to yourself. Very serious. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, many sleep. And this is the verse. For if we would judge ourselves, so, we'll we not be judged. Judge. But when we are judged, we chasten of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. world. So there's a progression there. Mm -hmm. If I judge myself, mm -hmm. I will not be judged. Jesus won't need to judge me. Yeah. But if he does judge me, he mm -hmm. chastens me mm -hmm. so that I'm not condemned with the world. Because every son... It says the father will chastise. I chastise my own children because I love them. And every son, it, God will chastise. If you won't let God chastise you, then you're not a son. He calls you a bastard. Yeah. You're not. He's not your father. Somebody else is your father. Yeah. So if we judge ourselves, he doesn't need to judge us. But if we won't judge ourselves, God will chastise us so we're not condemned with the world. Yeah. He's got yeah. to judge his own. Mm -hmm. So there's a progression. There's, there's, a, uh, there's progression and protection as well. You know, deal with it, nip in the bud quickly. Deal with it quickly before the because it's like the Lord in His care and wants to protect us from the outsider. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's such a caring. I'm just looking at it like yeah. So, so if we judge ourselves, yeah. we, we we relieve ourselves from God judging us. God wouldn't need to yeah. judge us. But if we don't judge ourselves, he'll have to chastise us. How many Christians are sick? How many Christians have problems mm -hmm. in their life because they've not judged themselves? And God's judging them, and they don't even realise it. And nobody tells them, maybe yeah. God's allowed this, well, God certainly allowed mm -hmm. the circumstance, so you'll take stock and yeah. see if you need to judge yourself. Yeah. Because we can't blame the devil for bad circumstances yeah. or sickness because I'm a child of God. So it's usually because I'm not living right as a mm -hmm. Christian. It's definitely pride in action here because, Maurice, this is where we get offended. Somebody says something, we get offended quickly. We react quickly first in the flesh before we even pray and ask God if it's true. And uh, it's... Really, like you said, we should have started with it. It's really hard to judge ourselves in that sense. That's why we have to have accountability with one another. Yeah. Because as soon as, you know, in the first part where we can judge among brothers, yeah. that should be it. Yes. That yeah. should be it, really. It should help us. It should help us. Like, And then I can keep short accounts yeah. with my brother, with the Lord, with... But this one is really challenging because we, you know, most the body of Christ is stuck there. Yeah, but thank God for brothers yeah. that love us enough to tell us our faults. Thank yeah. God for a good wife yes. who will tell me my faults. Oh, yes. I don't always oh, yeah. like that, but yeah. thank God for a godly wife who will say, Maurice. What do we have to lose, Maurice? Just if you think about it, we're training. So what? Nothing. So I messed it up. It's and... only about the pride that's hurt. Yeah. It's, it... Oh, man. 
But thank God for a yeah. godly wife. Thank God for yeah. godly brothers and sisters who can yeah. say, Joseph, I think this, or yeah. Morris, I think that. I should be able to take it from a yeah. brother and consider it and judge myself. Mm -hmm. that, that we're supposed to help one another when you come together, yeah. you know, exhort, rebuke. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what instruct we're supposed to all do. Of that. The word of God does that anyway, yeah, Timothy yeah, tells us. Yeah, yeah. Corrects, instructs, rebuke, and, yeah. you know, and it comforts as well. Morris, I think if if we can really understand, if, we can, if the Holy Spirit can help us to realize this, it's a good exercise. Yes. I mean, a healthy exercise. Am I truly dead in Christ? Am I truly, or do I still have me? Rising up every time somebody try and tell me something in it, you know, it's yeah. getting offended is a challenge. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So th yeah. that's the six yeah. things. Mm -hmm. That's we can't judge yeah. after the flesh. Mm -hmm. But what about the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. One of the gifts of the Spirit is Discern. discernment. Yeah. So we're allowed to judge when the Holy Ghost reveals it. Now, yeah. this is very dangerous because people will mm. say, point the finger, God and it's said. them. I know the heart. I yeah. know why they've done that. Yeah. That's the flesh. But if the Holy Ghost reveals it, mm. if the Holy Ghost reveals to me that somebody's committed adultery mm -hmm. and I've no idea about it, that's different. Mm -hmm. Then I can, I can judge them. I can go to them and try and help them. Mm -hmm. So I've got some examples of yeah. people yeah. who are judged by the Spirit when yeah. they didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. uh, the key is John 5, verse 30. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus, mm -hmm. perfect man, mm -hmm. no sin. Oh, yes. And this is what he says. Mm -hmm. I can of mine own self do nothing. Yeah. As I hear, I judge. Yeah. So he doesn't judge himself. Mm -hmm. As he hears God speak, mm -hmm. then he judges. This is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. This is... Now, we're allowed to judge when the Holy Ghost, we mm. hear the Holy Ghost. We're not allowed to judge of ourselves. I could do nothing of myself. This is Jesus, a sinless man, yeah. and he couldn't even judge. He said, I judge no man after the flesh. Mm -hmm. I can of oh, my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, mm -hmm. and my judgment is just. Mm -hmm. Why is his judgment just? Mm -hmm. Because I seek not mine own will, yeah. but the will of the Father which sent me. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. if you only want to do God's will, yeah. then your judgment will be just. But if you've got your own agenda, if mm -hmm. you're trying to build your church, if you're trying mm -hmm. to prove that you're right and you're wrong, mm -hmm. then your judgment won't be right. You've just got to hear the Holy Ghost. You yeah. can't judge. He says, my judgment is always yeah. right because I don't do anything of myself. I listen to the Father. So that's the key. That's the example. <laughs> that is absolutely key because Morris. And God will give you the Holy Spirit because he sees that you want to seize from your own self. You want to do everything to please him. Yeah. Now he gives the Holy Spirit who knows the Father and he knows how to please the Father. Yeah. And really, this is, I can understand why Jesus said deny self. Yeah. Because you can't judge if you're full of self. So Only when you've denied self can you yeah. judge. Because if you judge of yourself, it's sin. It says, don't judge your brother. And there's a humility that comes when you really know that you're a stinker. You really know that you, you really know who you are. You know how we said at the beginning of the, the someone on the man, someone yeah. on the man, when you said, uh, a true assessment, you know, you, it's a true assessment of yourself. This is, it's, it's really, it goes through it. Yes. Because now you realize only by the grace of God. Yeah. Who am I to judge my yeah. brother? I'm a yeah. sinner myself, save yeah. me grace. What what gives me the right to yeah. judge you except mm. in humility and yeah. to help you? Yeah. Uh, or if the Holy Ghost reveals yeah. something. Amen. So we're looking at things that the Holy Ghost has revealed. Yes. Yes, Acts yes. chapter 5. Mm -hmm. This is not judging after the flesh because they wouldn't know. Mm. It's about Ananias and Sapphira. Oh, dear. Peter didn't know. No. It was the Holy Ghost that told him. He lied to God. In fact, he actually claimed, I don't know, the Holy Ghost, you've lied to the Holy Ghost, not to me. You've not lied to the church. You've lied to the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost has revealed it to me. Yeah. So this is judgment. And when the Holy Ghost reveals it, it's serious. Mm -hmm. And the consequences. God is so gracious to us. Go ahead, a, a certain man named Ananias <laughs> and Sapphira, 
his wife sold a possession and mm. kept that part of the price. His wife also being privy to it mm -hmm. and brought a certain part and laid it to the apostles' feet. Mm -hmm. They sold the house. They brought the money to the mm -hmm. apostles and said, we're giving all this money to the... To the work of them, yeah. The work, but they'd kept that part. Mm -hmm. So they lied. Mm -hmm. They could have said, we're giving three quarters. Mm -hmm. But Peter said, Ananias, why is Satan... Wow. Filled your heart to light of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Satan's give you the thought, keep yeah. some of the money back. And to keep part of the price of land. While it was remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, it was your own power. Mm -hmm. Why hast thou conceived this thing in your heart? Mm -hmm. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Mm -hmm. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. A great fear upon came yeah. upon all them that heard these sayings. Mm -hmm. So Peter didn't know that. He said no. the Holy Ghost reveals it. But now it was revealed, mm -hmm. Peter now judged his wife. Mm -hmm. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried mm -hmm. him. And it was about the space of three hours mm -hmm. after his, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came yeah. in. And Peter said unto so now Peter is testing yeah. her. Mm -hmm. Because he knew what the, tell me. the Holy Ghost revealed. Yeah. He said, tell, tell me. me. Yeah. So he didn't know. Yeah. The Holy Ghost hadn't revealed that only yeah. about Ananias. Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yeah, for so much. So now he'd caught her. Then Peter mm. said, how is it you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which should better thy husband are at the door. They shall carry thee yeah. the out. Then she fell down straight away his, his, his feet, mm -hmm. yielded up the ghost, and the young men came in and found her dead, carried her forth and buried her with her husband. He cursed her. Yeah. He passed sentence. Yeah. First of all, the Holy Ghost passed sentence because yeah. the Holy Ghost struck him, put... Peter didn't say you're going to die. Yeah. He said the Holy Ghost fell on him and he fell down as dead. The Holy Ghost. But yeah. now Peter knew mm -hmm. and he, he tested his wife and said, how much did you did you sell it for this? She says, oh, yes. Yeah. And he said, you've lied to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And he, he pronounced that. He says, the, the yeah. men that carried your husband out will carry you out. He cursed her with death. Yeah. He pronounced judgment. You know, Jesus, Very serious. Jesus said, all sin against the Son of Man that's okay. But it's against the Holy Ghost. Serious. I never <laughs> thought of that scripture, yeah? It's like You've lied to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That, that because, can't be forgiven. You're going to pay for that. And that was at the birth of the church where the shadow of Peter was doing miracles. That was just yeah. at a very wrong time, brother. <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, it's never right. When, God's, when the Holy Ghost is moving, you can't play around. No. When when the Holy Ghost isn't that, moving, okay. But yeah. when there's true revival, yeah. I'm saying when the Holy Ghost is moving, you you can't mess around. And this is God's assessment because, like I said, Peter didn't know. But you see, this sin at that time, even Ananias, they didn't know no the depth of the, you know the consequence of the. They just the had same. a thought. Yeah. They didn't know it was Satan. They thought, oh, we'll keep that part. Exactly. They, they agreed together. Look, yeah. we'll say we'll give it all, but yeah. we need a holiday. Yeah. We'll keep a couple of thousand <laughs> back for a holiday. They didn't yeah. know it was the Holy Ghost. But you see, yeah. when the Spirit of God's... And I've seen this in my mm. father's ministry. Mm. I've written about it in his book. This is serious. The biography. Mm. You know, uh, when people came against my father because it was in revival. And they dropped down dead. Wow. I, I think I've given two instances in wow. the book. Uh, where God struck people dead. You, you've got to be careful yeah. when God's moving. Amen. So Ananias and Sapphira, Simon the sorcerer, mm. Acts 8. <laughs> Peter didn't know. Again. <laughs> Again. This is Acts 8, mm -hmm. verse 9. Mm -hmm. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Hmm. And to him they re gave regard, because of a long time he bewitched them with sorceries. Yeah. So here was a, a man in the occult. Mm -hmm. And when they be, when they believed 
Philip's preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Mm -hmm. Then Simon himself believed also. Mm. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondering, beholding the miracles and sounds which he's done. Mm -hmm. So this man is a Christian now. Mm -hmm. No, he believes. He's turned, he's mm -hmm. believed, he's yeah. been baptized yeah. and he's following Philip. And he's, he can't believe the, the power of God. He had power with the Satan, but now he can't believe the power of God. Yeah. Uh, and, and he saw them lay... Lay hands, he lay saw hands the demonstration. He to, loved to the demonstration. To see the Holy yeah. Ghost. Yeah. Verse 18, and when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, and he offered them money. He's, he's a new convert, he's yeah. genuine. He's thinking, wow, yeah. I want this gift. He's not thinking about the no. seriousness of it. No, I don't think yeah. he's a wicked man. Yeah. Say, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he mm -hmm. may receive the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he wanted it, and, and it's come from the world where you pay for things. Wow. But Peter said to them, Tilly, your money perish with thee yeah. because thou hast thought the gift of God may be purchased with money. Yeah. He rebuked him. Yeah. That thou hast neither lot nor part in this matter, for thy heart is not right before God. So he says, there's something wrong with your heart, Simon. Yes. And that's a spiritual judgment. A spiritual. Because he went to the heart now. This is, yeah, but listen what yeah. he says. Yeah. Repent there of this yeah. wickedness and pray yeah. God. It perhaps the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven. So mm. he's not condemning him. He says, mm. look, yeah. you're wrong. grace. You, yeah. Wow. Repent and God will forgive you. Wow. And this is what he said, I perceive. I now, perceive. Now, he didn't know that himself. Yeah. That thou, thou art in the gall of bitterness and the bond of iniquity. How did he know that? Yeah, by the Holy Spirit. It's bitterness. It's yeah. the root of your problem. Yes. Repent. So he exposed the root of the problem so yeah. he could say, Lord, forgive me for yeah. my goal of bitterness, yeah. from my bond of iniquity. Yeah, he was bringing it down so you know what to repent. That answered Simon. So yeah. people criticize him, but he's, no. I can only see him as a good man. Then answered Simon said, pray ye to the Lord for me that none of the things that you've spoken come upon me. Yeah. Pray for me. So how, how can that be? And when they had testified mm -hmm. the Lord they returned to Jerusalem. So... I can't find anything yeah. wrong with him, can you? Yeah. He and repented. Yeah. He says, pray for me that yeah. those things don't happen to me. Yeah. And even when he said, pray for me, he doesn't really know what to say. No. He said, Ac according to what you say, please let not that happen to me. Yeah. It's, and for me, and the, the, if the Holy Spirit put it there, yeah. I probably believe that he repented, he truly repented. Yeah. If Simon took time to explain to him, because I believe this is the anger of God that Simon is demonstrating there yeah, because yeah. that's too deep yeah yeah but peter is being deep there you yeah, know he yeah. went straight to the the heart of the matter yeah. so so there's yeah. spiritual discernment yes peter didn't know one. it was a gall of bitter he mm. didn't know the root yeah he said your money perished with you yeah. to think that was normal yeah. thinking you can't buy gifts or repent yeah. but then the holy ghost said well yeah. tell him the root of the matter and, and he said well pray for me then and yeah. he repented man uh, and the last one, mm -hmm. Acts 16. Mm -hmm. This is interesting because you need discernment. You know, the mm -hmm. gifts of the Spirit work together. So mm -hmm. a word of knowledge, mm -hmm. when you've got supernatural knowledge about it, like mm -hmm. Peter had, mm -hmm. then you need supernatural wisdom, yeah. the gift of wisdom, to know how to administer yeah, it. Knowledge so applied. Yeah, so if I'm preaching in a church and God shows me that man has committed adultery, mm -hmm. I see it. Mm -hmm. What do I do? That's I've, I didn't know that, so the Holy Ghost has revealed me. Yeah. That's a word of knowledge. Now I need the word of wisdom. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Do do I say, stand up, sir? And yeah. he stands up and I said, you're spot. committing adultery. Now I've exposed him to the whole world. No. His wife knows and all the people know. Yeah. Maybe God wants me to take him aside and say, Sir, yeah. can I see you in the vestry later? And I say to him, Look, God showed me you're committing adultery. Yeah. Now only the two of us know. Yeah, tell him his fault. Uh, we can repent. Mm -hmm. His wife doesn't need to know. He can get rid yeah. of that other woman, go back to his wife. She, We've covered the sin yeah. and he's repented. The idea is to cover the sin and repent. Yeah. Or do I not even tell the man? Because... He knows that I, uh, all the pastor knows. Mm -hmm. He'll never look at me straight in the face again because he knows, you know. Yeah. 
Maybe I should go home and fast and pray for him. Mm-hmm. And God changes his heart and he gets mm-hmm. rid of that woman mm-hmm. and, go, and forgives his sin. Mm-hmm. So I could confront him. I could, in public, I could mm-hmm. do it in public, mm-hmm. privately, yeah. or I could do it before God. Yeah. So that's three options. Yeah. Maybe there's more. Yeah. So you can't just, <laughs> you know, people think, well, God showed me I'm going to do it. Yeah. And pride comes in then. Yeah. Well, I'm Easily. going to expose him. See, yeah. it's very dangerous, the yeah. gifts of the Spirit. If you're not humble, if you don't only do what God says you, so tells you, you'll do it in, in pride, in arrogance. Yeah. Act, Act, Act 16, 16. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I'm it. looking yeah. at the wrong scripture. Act 16, mm-hmm. verse 16. What is, this, is, this is so important because look at it. Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, he can say, as I hear, at church. That is so powerful. So we shouldn't rush to it. So there should still be the grace being yeah. applied in yeah. all the things that we do because like Paul said at the beginning of the study, the aim is to save those. That's the aim. That's yeah. why you confront your brother. Yeah. Privately, you yeah. don't expose him. Yeah. Then the, just the elders yeah. and then the whole church, but you yeah. don't expose him. So Amen. here's an example. Yeah. Acts 16, verse 16. And it Mm -hmm. came to pass as he went to prayer, Mm -hmm. a certain damsel, this is Paul, Mm -hmm. possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by sooth, said, Mm -hmm. Paul has come into this town. He doesn't know the reputation of this Mm -hmm. woman. He's ignorant, so he doesn't know. He's telling us what he didn't know. Mm -hmm. The same followed Paul and us, and Christ Mm -hmm. said, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. Mm -hmm. So. What's wrong with that? The girl follows them and yeah. said, and, and everyone reveres her, yeah. and she said, these men show us mm-hmm. the way of salvation. They're, they're from the almighty God. Yeah. It was a true prophecy. And it's, so, like, it's like a demon in Mark one twenty four saying, you, have you come to torment us? You holy man of God. You, yeah. And shh, Jesus said, don't talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, go ahead. I, I know where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so she did this many days, yeah, many and Paul days. didn't rebuke her. Yeah. So he put up with it for. Well, either he didn't know, mm-hmm. because many people would come and follow yeah. Paul because of what she said. She would have brought many people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure many people got. Uh, accepted Christ mm-hmm. because of this girl's testimony. Mm-hmm. She followed them many days. Mm-hmm. Well, many days is is more than one or two. Many yeah. days, maybe yeah. a week. You know, many days, you would think five, seven days a week. And this she did many days, not few days. Mm-hmm. Few is three yeah. or four, many days. But Paul, being grieved, mm-hmm. turned and said to the spirit. Mm-hmm. So this was after many days he was yes. grieved. It didn't yeah. say he was grieved all along. Yeah. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus, come out of her. Mm-hmm. And it came out the same hour. Mm-hmm. And when her masters saw the hopes of the gain were gone, (laughs) they drew them into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And Paul had a lot of, Paul was put in prison because of this. Mm -hmm. So maybe the Holy Ghost hid it from Paul Mm -hmm. so that people could get saved. Because as soon as he cast the devil out, Mm -hmm. hell broke loose and Paul was put in prison. So God. They heard heard the gospel already. God wanted the many days for yeah. them to preach the gospel because yeah. I don't know whether they threw them out, but often when they got out of a prison, they had to go to another town. So yeah. God want, so either God revealed it to Paul on the first day and yeah. said, "Watch out, that's the devil speaking," mm-hmm. but do nothing because it'll bring people to get saved, wow. or else the Holy Ghost hid it. Yeah. So either he, he knew it from the beginning and he yeah. had wisdom to not deal with it. Yeah. Or else God hid it from him and he thought, well, this is wonderful. Many people are coming to get saved. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, Mm -hmm. you know, after many days, he was grieved in his spirit, thought there's something wrong. I don't know which way round it was. And it doesn't matter. We're learning the principles. Yeah, the principles. That you only do what the Father says. It was after many days God said, now cast her out. Yes. And there had to be a sign for Paul. The grief, the grievance. Yeah. You know, the Holy Spirit in Paul. It's was, time to do something. Yeah, it's time to do something. You can't leave it any longer. Maybe yeah. he was grieving all the days, yeah. but 
Yeah, and we don't know. You know, you said in one of your study, lies is who speaks it. Because the devil speaks the word of God, but he turned it into a lie because he's... He's Amish, yeah. Yeah, because Jesus didn't accept testimony from the demonic as well, even though they were saying the truth. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. You, you're the holy man of God. Yeah. And here, Paul is not accepting that in the end there. But he, didn't, he just said he cast his spirit out. Yeah. And it's like there's that, whoever says something, it has to be of God saying yeah. it. Yeah. You see, and Paul can discern that, mm -mm, that person there, this is not right. This yeah. is, there's something wrong about it. Well, Peter, when he, he said, get this thought out of your head, Jesus, he said, <laughs> Peter, that's Satan speaking yeah. through you. You've wow. listened to Satan. Yeah. Wow. And, and he knew. And he dealt with it straight yeah. away. So yeah. I l allow people to think yeah, either discerning. way with that. It doesn't matter. But yeah. we've got the principle yeah. that he only did what yeah. God showed him. Mm -hmm. And that was supernatural. How would he know when she said yeah. something good? Yeah. And, and people came. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we judge mm -hmm. the things we should do mm -hmm. uh, according to the scriptures. Yeah. And if God allows us mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost to reveal things, then we judge what what we didn't know, and we're judging men's hearts now, the gall of bitterness. Yeah. That's his heart. Bitter. Yeah. Uh, you've lied in your heart, Ananias yeah. and Sophia. Yeah. But only the Holy Ghost could do that, but we mustn't play at him. Yeah. So the conclusion, <laughs> so this is for the two weeks, be careful not to judge our brother, yeah. only his sin. That's last week. We can yeah. judge his sin, but not our brother's heart. And don't be afraid to judge the things that mm -hmm. we're instructed to judge. Yeah. And be careful you don't play at the Holy Ghost. Yeah. God revealed this to me, brother. Mm. If he has, that's great. Mm. But if it's you mm -hmm. playing at God, that's very dangerous. That's yeah. blasphemy. To say God's showed me what's yeah. in your heart and I'm just guessing or yeah. I think I know, that's very dangerous, Joseph. So... So we finish there. Maybe you should pray that God Absolutely. will help us to have discernment yeah. and know what to judge and what not to judge. My Lord and my God, we just thank you for this study today. We really, as we go through these studies, we really realize that Christianity is a supernatural, powerful, power-filled, spirit-filled life. Yeah. You have to have discernment from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit, meaning you have to be driven, led, completely overpowered by the Holy Spirit yeah. to live the Christian life so that you can discern right and wrong. You can discern the right way, God's way. Father, I pray, in the, those who will be going through these studies, I pray, equip them with the Holy Spirit. Who is sufficient to do this, Lord? We need your Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It will help us to judge righteously. Yeah. Father, we thank you for these studies. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.